blasphemed his holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be his holy name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God.
imagination that torment people in the negative realm. But how many of you know, glory to God, there is a ransom one, a redeemed one, a remnant seed that God has raised up to be revealed in this hour. And brother, let me tell you, it's reward time. Reward time. The Bible said if, it, if a man takes something that's not his, he shall restore it sevenfold. Hallelujah. I tell you, I'd just like to be sitting with you on your porch when the rewarder comes around. When them sevenfold return. Sevenfold of what you've been through with every child. Sevenfold of every time you needed rent money. Sevenfold of every time you wish you could eat better than what you was eating. Sevenfold of every time you've had to let a car go. Sevenfold of every time that phone rung and it was bad news on the other end. If that means, now you go on and believe in your round, but I'm feeling big this morning, so I'm going to believe in my round. That means for every bad phone call I've ever got, believe you me, if you've ever been in the ministry, you get them. Every bad phone call I ever got, I'm going to get seven good ones. That means every time somebody called and said, I owe this, I'm going to get seven more. Said there's something coming your way. You say, do you believe that? Yeah, I believe it. I, look, look. The Lord will make you see that man ain't going to help you. The only help he's going to get is out of here. He'll bring you to the place where you can't depend on nobody but him. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you get there, blessed be God, you get on the, you go through the Jordan and you come up. When you get to coming up, you feel the victory side of it. Amen. You feel the death, you feel the burial, but my God, after the death and after the burial, there's a resurrection. Now look here. Before I get so lost, I don't remember what I'm doing. You'll be back here at 97 and then you'll be back here Tuesday. Won't be no um, won't be no uh, Wednesday, won't be no Thursday. That'll be Tuesday. At 7 30. Yeah, that's right. Sunday evening tonight, 6.30 prayer, then 7 o'clock uh, evening service, and no service Wednesday, Thursday. We'll be moving everything in Tuesday. We'll have our Wednesday. And listen, you don't want to miss Tuesday because the Lord willing, on the way I'm moving now in the Word, I'm going to preach to you a message on the more excellent name. And I've been working on that thing. Yeah. Boy, when April got to see yeah. that, I wanted to tear loose and preach it this morning. But I've got a few more lines I, I want to pray through and get a little deeper. I something I feel God's got the machine greasing yeah. it up so it'll spin something out. You know what that is, amen? And I want to tell you, we're going to now I want to tell you something. If you don't like strong preaching on the name, you won't enjoy that service on Tuesday night. Because I'm going to tell you how every name, title, description of God had to boil down into one name. And that one name releases all that God is through that name. Under the, and we have never used the full power of that name. No, sir. But we're coming into that more excellent hour. Glory be to God. When we'll walk in the full inheritance. Hallelujah. And when we invoke that name, we won't just do it like we're calling on another person. But we'll believe we are of that order that we're calling on. Hallelujah. So you don't want to miss that service because God has breathed that word into my spirit. But I, you say, well, why don't not give it this morning? Because he breathed another one for this morning. And I'm going to continue on with that Elisha company message. And I started preaching to you Wednesday night and I got down to where Elijah was running under the hand of the Lord. And I will tell you something. How many know that the hand, you say, well, what does that hand mean? And we're going to take for our scripture this morning, 1 Kings 19, verses 19 through 21. But how many know 
the, the hand of the Lord that Elijah was running under, he had just seen the hand, didn't he? That hand come up out of the sea. Glory. And it was a cloud. And we're them clouds. Clouds in the Bible ain't always clouds in the sky. Clouds in the Bible many times are people. Trees are people. Amen. Graves are people. I wish I knew what the Word said. You say, how could a grave be a person? Because this body is made of the dust of the earth. And Jesus said to those Pharisees, you're like a whitewashed sepulcher that inside is full of dead men's bones. And how many know that the Lord Jesus taught us that the hour was coming and now is when all they that are in the grave shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and shall come forth. And how many believes that means come forth in a new dimension, in a new order? And that, that grave he's calling us out of is these fleshly ways, this carnal mind. Romans 8 says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the carnal mind is not subject unto the laws of God, neither indeed can be. Amen. So we've got to understand that Jude talks about clouds with no water, clouds with no rain, and he's describing people. He's describing an old ministry that can't rain no more. Ain't got no water in it. Hallelujah. We've sat under such many a time. You didn't get wet. You got dry. You dried up. The more you listen to them, the more you die. Because everything out of their mouth was of an old order. But how many of you know that Elijah's ser Elijah servant that seven times said, I see a cloud and it's come up out of the sea. Lord, have mercy. It didn't come out of the sky. It come up out of the sea. And so we come to the other conclusion that clouds just ain't people, but the sea is people. And up out of the people has come a ministry. Glory to God. And the sound of rain that Elijah heard was the sound of a louder rain. Hallelujah. But in this glorious day, it's a day like no other because something is getting ready to happen that ain't never happened in any other generation ahead of us. The former and the latter rain are coming together in the first month. And James said, Be patient, my brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. For the Lord hath great patience for His precious fruit of the earth until it receive the early and the latter rain. Glory be to God. Now the early rain was the seed rain and the latter rain was the harvest rain. The seed rain is those when they get born again. The harvest rain is those who were born again, growing up into Him and coming into the full feast of tabernacles uh, and the harvest of the barley and the wheat. Somebody say amen. Brother George Warnock had a series of writings he called the finest of the wheat. And that wasn't the wheat stalks in a field. That was us. Glory to God coming in to the fire. We sing it, don't we? This is our finest hour. For every field is white. And the Spirit of the living God is on us to bind the broken hearts, to cause the blind to see. This is our finest hour to set them free. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And Elijah heard the sound of an abundance of rain. And Peter jumps up in the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost began to preach about the beginning of that rain. He said it'll come to pass. Everybody say the first and the second. How many know we're not just two-day people? We're three-day people. We have met him at the altar and got saved. We met him in the upper room and got the Holy Ghost. But my God, I want to meet him in another realm. I want to meet him in the, the Holy of Holies. I want to... I want a ruling reign. I want a ruling reign in that Melchizedek order. Hallelujah. I've had the Holy Ghost feed with the Holy Ghost. You have to struggle. Even with the Holy Ghost, you have to kick and fight to keep your head above the water. But I'm going to tell you there's an Elisha crowd. Glory to God that the man is falling on in double portion capacity of corporate measure of the fullness of the body of Christ. Hallelujah to God. 
I have my way, I'd sit down and talk this message in the, another language, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm having five more to speak out it to you in the English than I am to blurt out in the Holy Ghost right now. But you see, hallelujah, that we're three-day people. And Peter prophesied about the first two days. Everybody say the first two. In the book of Acts, he introduced the name. I'm going to mess these messages up, putting them together because i got both of them running. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to hear this, preacher. That's the first time they, they ever used his name after the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is a resurrected spirit of Jesus, because that wasn't the family name until Jesus come up on the third day out of the grave. And when he came out, he begat a people after his own image, his own likeness, and gave them his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And people today is afraid to go under in his name. They're afraid for you to take them in that water in his name. There's people all over this county criticized, crucified, strains me up from tip to toe because I dare put anybody in that water baptism tank in his name. You hang around here Tuesday night. Hallelujah. I'll show you so many scriptures in the book of Acts till you'll be begging me to put you under in that name. You've been around here when I put them under in that name and watched them come up, have you? Huh? When they come up, they got the electricity all over them. They got so much fire on them, I have sometimes we have to haul them out of that tank because they're so rough in the spirit. I put them down and brought them up when they didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost and they come up out of that water speaking in other tongues as the spirit gave the utterance. So don't mess with the name. Leave me alone. I'm happy where I'm at. Hallelujah. If that water touches me, let the name touch me too. Because whatever I do in word or in deed, I do it all in that name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Woo. Amen. I won't criticize you, but don't criticize me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. I've got scripture, chapter and verse for mine. I got more than just a plaque hanging on the wall. I've got more than just a certificate. I've got the scriptures or the word of the living God. Well, glory. Hallelujah. And then he said, to everybody say the first. That's salvation. Whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord. Amen. Then he said, Repent and one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and their children even as many afar off as the Lord our God shall call. And Peter prophesied two days but then he talked about a third day. In Acts 2, he talked about a day when God was going to reveal blood and fires and vapors of smoke. He said the sun, the moon was going to be turned into the blood and the sun was going to be turned into darkness. In that great and notable, oh hallelujah, day of the Lord. What is that moon? What is that sun? The old ministry. The old ministry. The law. And the prophet. Somebody say praise the Lord. The law and the prophet. How do you know? Because of Joseph's dream. Joseph's dream. In Joseph's dream, the moon and the sun, which represented his father and his mother, did what? Bowed down. It refused to shine. Now if the sun don't shine, the moon can't shine. Because the moon reflects the sun. Somebody say amen. amen. So blessed be God when the Lord put the candle out in that old order, all of it ceased to function. The only thing that operates now is a memory. Well, well. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You say, well, how are we going to see then? I'll tell you how. In that day, you'll need neither the light of the sun nor the moon. 
of the Lamb Himself. Woo! <laughs> well, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lamb Himself shall be the light of that city. So we're coming to that day when that old ministry ain't gonna, it, it just quit working. Once you get illuminated that God's here now in us, working here now, then when you go here in that old heart and you hear him praying, now, Father, please do come among us. Jesus, please come in there. What do you do? You say, my God, somebody tell that man, please, that Jesus is standing there with him. He told that man. Hallelujah. And you know why? Because the sun quit shining for you yeah. in that order. Amen? When you go back under it, you think, did you, uh, uh, Brother Hagin said you're like washing your feet with your socks on. Right just don't feel right. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You really, want, you really want it to feel funny. You just be a preacher. Just preach that new round. And then have to go preach in that. But you know, God gave me an anointing. I asked the Lord. I told the Lord. I said, Lord, I, it ain't right to just preach to people who are already in that order. I want you to teach me how to teach people who are in that order how to come forth and come out of it without them getting so mad they won't listen to me. Hallelujah. 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 And you know what I found the way was? You just got to walk through that word and show them verse by verse. Hallelujah. And if you'll show them it's in the Bible, they have. You can't argue with what's in the Scriptures. Amen, Hallelujah. brother. Hallelujah. I got the preaching here. I mean, I got to letting it rip, letting it go, and flying off. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, we had some experiences, didn't we? Amen. I never will forget the first Sunday morning I preached in here and told you, People that some of you was in here, some of them ain't here. They couldn't walk like Jesus said the hard saying, "Who can bear it?" And uh, they, uh, when I said, "You're the mansion," I began to teach on John 14. Lord, I saw blood drain out of faces right there on the seat. I thought that one would get thrown out, but everybody knew I was anointed to teach them that, and because it was a mandate of God on my life to bring a people into this, oh hallelujah, into this hour. And then whenever, hallelujah, whenever all that came, you know, we really got to flowing in it. There's a time not long after that, God sent 11 preachers in this church on one night. That's the truth. He sent 11 preachers, never one of them stood up and confirmed the word of the Lord. I didn't know what was happening. I was sitting on the platform praying to open my eyes up. I mean, good, wonderful men of God. Lloyd Wilhite, Brother Lloyd Wilhite was one of them. Come through that door from, from uh, Porter, Oklahoma. I watched old TV clips that had been given to me where he preached on local television there for years. I knew he was a man of God. I went to do a memorial service for Sue's sister Bernice, and I was met by a woman who came to me and said, Brother Matt, we've got Brother Lloyd Wilhite and his wife staying at our house in Brandon. I said, sure enough. She said, yeah, and I thought he'd just love to come to your place. I said, well, if he comes to our place, you tell him uh, that if he comes to our place, he's going to do the preaching that night. And she said, well, I'll tell him, but he might just want to listen. I said, no, you tell him that he's going to bring the word that night because that loud they have looked up to that great man of God. He got up, walked down here, got up in his pulpit, and the first thing he opened his service was by saying, he said, I've been like Joseph, and I've been hunting my brothers for years, and I found one of them here uh, tonight. And he got up, and let me tell you something. I mean, I just had a bunch of people show themselves and go hog wild and act like children and get mad. And, of course, they don't never go by themselves. They've always got to find a friend to carry with them. <laughs> And when they all got gone, I wouldn't bend the wouldn't even bend the foot. I mean, I'd let my hand fall off before I done anything because I just knew it was just had to be. It was just the Lord because I couldn't do nothing about it. I just had to back my off and let God be God and let Him have His way and work it out as He will. And Brother Will, I got up, looked at this church, <laughs> and he said, "I'll tell you what I tell my people when I started forty something years ago." He said. You may not be anointed to be here, but I'm anointed to be here. Amen. 
And he said, at this church, we don't change pastors. We change congregations occasionally. And I'm sitting back there, wanting my mouth hanging up. And I said, my God, have mercy. Them people's going to listen to this and think I got hired that man to get up and say. But it wasn't. It was a gift of God in operation. So I know there, that, that, that sun and that moon don't need to shine. If it don't shine, don't you worry about it. The Lamb Himself is the light. Listen, the Holy Ghost will amplify and illuminate and bring the light that which you need to see. Don't worry about not having it all. It'll be there when you need it. Don't worry about not having enough money. Take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take care of itself. Sufficient unto the days are the evil thereof, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't you worry about next week. Don't you worry about next month. Don't you worry about next year. Don't even worry about two Tuesday night. There'll be enough fire here to take care of Tuesday when it gets here. Just live for the day. Walk in the light as He is in the light. Hallelujah. See, you can't sit around thinking all the time or you get in negativity. You start getting negative. You'll start hating people you don't know and hating them you do know. Turning against things you don't know nothing about. You got to let God rule your life. And if He rules your heart, it don't matter about any other man or woman because you and Jesus are one and you're walking in the glory together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I've done preach way beyond trying to read a text to you. I can just tell you the Bible says that Elijah found Elisha. And when he did, he threw that mantle on him. When he threw that man on him, Elisha was plowing and was standing behind the twelfth yoke of oxen. Hallelujah. How many know what twelve is in the Bible? Divine government. There's a new government took over. You know, they started that government's a twelve program. That was the silliest thing I ever heard of in my life. That's the truth. Many people got involved in it. You couldn't even go to the grocery store without being accountable to somebody. <laughs> Had to ask. Family started moving in together. So government, one another. Had to have somebody at all, all times to account to. It, you know, just about to go to the toilet, you had to have permission from a minister. You couldn't do anything. If you took a job, it had to bypass the minister. If they, let me tell you, don't call me if you want to take a job. If you want a job, go get the job. Leave me out of it. Ain't none of my business what you do. Hallelujah. If you want me to pray, you'll get one. I'll pray you'll get one. But for goodness sakes, don't call me every time you want to make a decision pull something out of the freezer. I don't care what you eat for supper. Just get it eat and get on to church in time. That's all I need. I don't need, hallelujah. I don't need you being telling me what kind of car you want to drive. That's none of my business. I don't want that job. I'm accountable for your souls, and that's it. And I handle them very, tra with, with great treasure do I look upon that. And I present you before the Father every day of my life because I am the high priest of this work. And I go before God every day and intercede on your behalf. Even if I don't specifically go through each individual, I present you as a body to the Lord and ask Him that you want for nothing and that your families live in harmony and that God blesses your life with anointings and so forth. And beyond that, and uh, beyond anything such as prayer for the sick and you need me in that state, I don't need to know what car you want to get. I don't need to know how much money you want to put in your 401k or whatever. I that ain't none of my business. But there was a day when the government was ruling the people. And everyone, but let me tell you something. When the realms of God take you over, you understand the kingdom. And in the kingdom there is a king. And that king is not absent, hallelujah, but he is present and he is seated on the throne and the government of our life is upon his shoulder. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah to God. <coughs> And when he met him, Elijah, Elijah said, let me go kiss my father and my mother goodbye. And something about that new apprehension of another dimension and another realm that will make those ties that seemed impossible for you to break, 
start popping off like that. If you'd have come to me 20 years ago and told me that I'm going to be standing where I'm standing today, preaching what I preach, saying what I say, believing what I believe, I would probably told you, hallelujah, that you needed a straight cat. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you know what? When I got apprehended, she caught tolerable whole child by another world, by another dimension. Suddenly, I said, my God, I've been believing a lie. Be quiet here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They said, that brother man, they don't believe in heaven. That's a lie. I, I didn't take nobody's heaven away. I'll give it to them. You never had no heaven. The only heaven you had was floating around and you hoped you'd have it someday. I grabbed a hold of it and told you you could walk in it right now. Hallelujah. You said, Brother Matt, they don't believe in the coming of the Lord. Watch him. I believe in more comings than they believe in. They only believe in two and I believe he's come 50 already this morning right here in this service this morning. Watch that, Brother Matt. He believes you can walk in and get translated in the spaghetti. I hope before I leave here this morning I make about seven or eight trips over into the glory side and get caught up in Him. Amen. You know what the truth is, folks? They don't know what that brother Matt believes because they won't come sit and listen to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Because they're afraid that they might feel that call of another world and another realm. Brother, it's time for us to stand up and identify with this great Holy Ghost that is laid hold of our heart. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. He has not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. None of us chose this way. No, sir. We didn't choose this way. We didn't choose to preach this. We didn't choose to believe this. We were chosen. I was happy in my religious denominational circles where I preached. I got good offerings. And I got good praise of men. And I had good crowds. That's the truth. On rare occasions did I ever preach to less than 75 people, sometimes well over 200. I was a happy camper. Hello. You think I chose this? It chose me. It chose me. I said it chose me. When I first started in the midst, I preached my first sermon in this pulpit in this church. I was 14 years old. Hallelujah. I'm not an idiot. I'm not a novice, but I'm not perfected. I'm headed that way. But I sure can't be a fool if I've come this far. I had to have learned something. And a lot of people, you know, they demean your authority because you, you know, you're 34 years old this week. And they demean that authority. What you don't understand is over half my life, this has been my life. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. I mean, we've started being supposed to go three days, went five and six weeks at the time. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Oh, God, get them filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and people shout, and women shout, and their hair fall down, fall out all over that floor. My God, we had meetings, folks. I'm not telling you it was all bad. It was wonderful. We had good times in the Spirit. We were out in the aisle. Them gifts worked. My God, some nights worked so good it scared me. That's the truth. Hallelujah. I see, one time I saw this woman, and she had these migraine headaches, and they were tormenting her so bad, and every doctor and neuro neurologist in the county and everybody had run examinations, they could not find the spot. And one night I was standing up preaching and that woman was Sunday school teacher. She was sitting in the halfway back on my right side and I looked up and I saw a ball of fire in that spot where they couldn't find it. And I run back there and grabbed that woman up and I had heard that woman tell people before, said them people all passes out when Brother Matt prays for them. And she said, I just don't know if all of that's Necessary, she said. I've never been slain in His passing glory, to God. and I looked back and seen that ball of fire in that spot, and I said, "My God, she's getting a miracle." I run down off of that pulpit and grabbed her up by the hand, and I said, "My sister, there ain't been a doctor in this town could find that spot." But I said.
said the Holy Ghost has found that spot tonight and he's healing that nerve and before I could go and lift my hand up to put it where God said put it my God she hit that floor Lord sound like she'd been shot out of a cannon she hit that floor speaking in tongues and to my knowledge ain't never had to take another tablet for a migraine headache I'm not telling you they were bad days I'm just telling you that I had to come into a new day but that day was glorious it passed away with honor and with high price hallelujah with beautiful works of God it wasn't wrong it was incomplete incomplete now, I want all you that listen to me on that internet to understand that. I'm not condemning what I was. I'm just telling you I found more. Amen. I'm not burning down the schoolhouse. When you see these feet get up and down, that, that, that new day didn't teach me that. I learned that when I got that Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you hear them tongues come out of me, I didn't get them tongues after I got in the kingdom believing. I got them tongues way back there. But they're still sweet today. I said, where the day I got them? Hallelujah. You understand what I'm preaching this morning? I'm trying to tell you that Elisha was not smiting his mother and father. He kissed them. Don't be going back and choking them. You go back and kiss them. The Bible said kiss the son. Lest you be angry with you. And the Bible, kiss means many things. One thing it means is reconciliation. So if you go back and kiss up by in that old rap, you're believing God to reconcile them right on into this day. And this hour. Amen. Hallelujah. Now with that introduction. Hallelujah. Preach on, brother. Hallelujah. I'm ready for the night to be here. I don't, I don't feel wore out yet. I want to read you one more scripture now. Philippians 3.12 says, Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect. Amen. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which he has apprehended me. Somebody say amen. Amen. When that hand ministry got on Elijah, he knew he was going to birth the people into it. And when he felt the birth pains of a coming movement, people, destiny, whatever you want to label it, he didn't walk, he run. The Bible said the hand of the Lord come on him and he ran. And he ran beyond Ahab's day. And he ran beyond the chariot. He ran beyond, hallelujah. The Bible said, companion Bible said, over 20 miles he run to get to Jezreel. Why was he running? Because he knew that that ministry was going to set on somebody. And he was bringing in a new word for a new day. He to us is the Lord Jesus, the head of the church. The first fruit, the one who heard the word, the one who brought the word to us. One of the most powerful scriptures in your Bible is John 1 and 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory as was the only begotten of the Father full of grace and full of truth. And of His fullness have we all received and grace for grace Hallelujah to the Lamb. Grace for grace. My Lord, I like the way Brother D said it, the W-O-R-D. Not the words, not just a book you hold in your hand, not just a series of things that God put together, not just a stack of papers on a shelf, but the W-O-R-D. The Word became the word should read tabernacled himself in a tent of flesh. Hallelujah. And that word was God Almighty. For the word said in the beginning was a word and the word was with God and the word was God and the same, that's us, hallelujah, was in the beginning with God. Hallelujah. Those poor disciples 
people standing around gazing. And many today are gazing. They won't run like Elijah. I saw Annie Allen lay his hands in a video one time on a man that had cancer of the spine. And that man couldn't do nothing. And he slapped that man's back and said he'd let him run like the prophet Elijah. And when he did that man's feet, even while he laid on that car, come up off that car, he started running like he was riding a bicycle more than a little bit. He pushed Brother Allen out of the way and jumped up off that stretcher. And he run all over that tent hill of the power of God. See, see, some people won't run with it. They'll gaze. They'll gaze waiting for what they have to come back. They're gazing wanting voice of healing days. They're gazing wanting the charismatic move. They're gazing wanting a word of faith move. They're gazing wanting a prophetic move. They're gazing wanting a... You know what I'm talking about this morning. They're gazing wanting the latter rain. I love to read about the latter rain, but it ain't coming again. It's done fell. Hallelujah. Even the Bible, the Lord said, if I raised them up, any, Noah, any of them, if I sent them back, they couldn't, they couldn't do it in this day because they had their day. But oh, there's a generation that's been counted for the Lord. Hallelujah. And He's promised to give the spoils of Calvary over to that generation and let them function as Christ in this earth. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you getting blessed this morning? Amen. And then the, uh, they, they were gazing. Everybody say gazing. I wonder how Elisha would have come into this thing if Elijah the old prophet had stood over there on that mountain gazing at what God done up there and said, ain't that wonderful? That cloud's beautiful. Look at that hand. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that wonderful? God didn't want him to gaze and he broke any gaze that might have been there by slapping that thing right on him and making his feet become like hind's feet. His feet became like hind's feet, brother. He couldn't have stayed still if he wanted to. The word of the Lord got in him and when the word of the Lord, how many know the book of Ezekiel teaches us that there's a wheel in every one of us. Hallelujah. There's a wheel in the middle of the wheel and then he said the spirit of the living creature gets in to that wheel and wherever they go the wheel has to go hallelujah turn turn in the direction of God that heart's wicked desperately wicked that's a word ain't it now don't you go thinking somebody else is wicked and yours ain't the word said that everybody's heart was desperately wicked and no man could know it only God we think we know ourselves. Then the Lord gives us a test. <laughs> we'll keep that to love. <laughs> Let it lay right there. That's enough. There ain't enough spirit in here. Everybody knows how to interpret that. But he ran, whether you want or what, I'm sure he wanted to, but if he hadn't wanted to, it's too bad. He could have said no a million times, but God said that ministry was going to go forth and that, that he had anointed Elisha the son of Shaphat had to be prophet in the stead or the rule of the Oh, glory to God. Jesus said in John 14, the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Hallelujah. 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 And when he got to run, the Spirit got on him with the running and on him. Let me tell you something. Don't you never mock nobody shouting, dancing, running. Brother, I like to see it. And I can tell you, I've seen the hand of the Lord get on people and them run all over the church. Run in tents. And you can see the dust coming up behind their heels. Yeah. Hallelujah. I prayed for them in their tents. They'd fall out and get up in that grass all over them. Yeah. <laughs> I told them one night we was out here in Bartow, and I mean it looked like the whole church was laying on the floor under that tent. Remember that night some of you were there? And I told them when they got up, I said, well, you can fall out in the tent. Just like you can in church, you just have to turn over to your neighbor and say, brush that off right there. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, the Spirit got on me and I went running through them, that crowd. Hallelujah. Some of you were sitting there. They gathered them around that altar in the Spirit of God. I've been preaching on the, the new priesthood and the whole knot and got on in my feet when I went to pray for them. And I mean, I was jumping to get to the next one. I felt it so strong. And the poor fellas was trying to run, keep up with me. And then people would just topple, 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 topple everywhere you look. Right down there in the old dirt and the grass. Hallelujah. Laying there on them floor on that grass ground and dirt ground, talking in tongues and feeling the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the hand of the Lord come on some more of them 
them today and let them run. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the book of Habakkuk, he said, I'm standing up waiting on God to show me the vision that he promised me. And the Lord said, call somebody over here and let them run with a sign that many may read it. Let them run with it for the vision will not tarry. It will come to pass. Hallelujah. And I believe God is anointing preachers in this hour and laymen in this hour and sons of God in this hour with a running spirit. Hallelujah. They get in a, I feel a hurry in my Holy Ghost spirit. I feel a rush is on. The Lord is going to hasten His work to perform it. Are you hearing me? He's going to do a quick work and cut it short in righteousness. Hallelujah. We thought it's going to take a long time. We've been geared to wait for years and hours for God to move. But the Holy Ghost is telling me right now, hallelujah, that we're coming into the hour when it's a quick work and the prophet is starting to get his running shoes on. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to believe God for the now. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of waiting on miracles. I'm tired of waiting on signs. I'm tired of what I've been patient. But Lord, if he puts the run in me, why should I be ashamed of it? Why should I back off from it? Why should I put the brakes on? My God, get your seatbelt off. Hallelujah. Get out of the safety zone. Get over here in the faith of God and let him flow through you. I don't mind waiting on things. I've waited a long time to get things. And it was right when I got it. And I ain't so good at waiting these days. Because I feel the fervency in my spirit. I'm getting bold sometimes in how I speak with the Lord. Are you? I'm getting tired of flipping over and not paying good attention to that scripture where he said, put me in remembrance and command ye me of things to come concerning my sons. I will not hide in the closet and pretend them scriptures ain't in the Bible. He told me, I, he said, if not I said, ye are all gods and every one of you children of the most high. I'm not going to pretend that don't mean what it says. And I think at high time that another Elijah put his shoes on and get to running. And tell that old Ahab, hey, yeah. if you're going to eat any more bitter herbs, you better go eat and drink. Because I hear the sound. Yes. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear it. Thank you, Lord. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. I hear the ground. The dust is kicking up. Say, come on, rain. Come on, rain. You know, the clocks on the wall will start ticking and you'll start hearing, here comes the rain, here comes the rain, here comes the rain. If you're not careful, the telephone will ring. And if you get it in your spirit just right, you'll answer it up and say, I hear the sound of another ministry, another day, another moment of God is coming. It's breaking for us. This ain't a revival. It's a move, a divine move of the living God. This isn't just going to be some one week meeting that was good and patted everybody scratched their itching ears. This is going to be so real it won't never quit. Amen. This Bible teaches me that, that, that in that hour the gates and the doors won't never be shut again. The people will be here around the clock. This place will have to have constant care because they'll never shut the doors. They'll come in shifts and droves. They'll come, some will come in the morning and pray till noon. Some will come in the noon and shout till the night. Some will come to the night. And if God will give me enough glorification of this body, I'd like to remain here for all three shifts. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'd like to stay. 24 hours. Woo! I believe somebody could get me a sandwich and a cup of coffee and excuse me for five minutes to get it down and then go right back into the glory of the Lord and shout and praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Woo! I feel that running prophet 
running through your land, running through my land, running through our house this morning. And everywhere he's running, he's throwing the mantle. Woo, hallelujah. He's looking at a people that God has chosen and he's casting that mantle on them. He is apprehending them. Apprehending them. Somebody say amen. amen. I hate it. It's time to close. <laughs> my, my, my. Glory to God. So I'll tell you, if you feel the wind go by you, it ain't called nobody left for wonder open. It's called the prophets running through the land. Say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Say amen. You got any papers to sign, sign them. You got any folders packed up, get them packed. You got any clothes to give away, give them away. You got any thing piled up on the shelf you've been meaning to do, get her done. You got any, oh glory to God, you got any calls you need to make, get them called. You got any people you need to visit, get them visit. Because you're fixing to be so took hold up, oh hallelujah. Glory to God, you're not going to, you know you're going to find out what that scripture means. You're not your own, you're bought with a price, amen. Therefore glorify God in your body. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 They're going to take hold of you in the parking lots. They're going to take hold of you in Walmarts. They're going to take hold of you in the deli. They're going to take hold of you in the shopping mall. You're going to get over there behind the dress rack in some department store. And some woman's going to say, I see the glory shining all over you. Could you lay your hands on me and believe God with me? And you're not going to have no control over it. You might get to prophesy right there in the middle of that section. And everybody just back away and let you have revival right there in that section. Well, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I've heard of I've heard of Bible schools where the power of God got so strong that even in the cafeteria they jump up and shout because the glory of the Lord was there. You know we went for years. This church has been a blessed church. We've always had shouting. Amen. The time I was born to this very day, there's always been dancing saints in this church. Yeah. But you don't know how many of them all over the place. It's been years since they've even heard a message. Amen. Give in tongues. Yes. Right. Been years since anybody felt enough of God that they couldn't stand on their feet anymore. Yeah. Been years since somebody got on their knees at an altar and prayed the fire of God in the midst. Been years since that preacher just left his notes and his sermon and had himself a big time in God. Years. Hello. But I'm telling you, this is a refreshing time from the presence of the Lord. And we are not going to have so much to say over it no more. Jesus said Elijah must come first. Why don't I leave it at that and we'll take up there tonight, okay? Jesus said, Elijah has to come first. Hallelujah. And if you receive it, hold up my shut up. He's already here. Hallelujah. Lord God, have mercy. He's already here. I can hear him riding. I can hear him running. I can hear him prophesying. I hear him talking. I hear him preaching. I hear him prophesying. I hear him declaring glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless his holy name. Elijah must first come. And when he does come, something starts happening. Everything that was split and apart starts coming together. The Bible says he starts turning the heart of the children back to their fathers. Hallelujah. <coughs> Unity starts in the body. Hallelujah. No more of this backbiting, gossiping. Going behind other folks back you worship God with and running them down. None of that exists anymore because Elijah must first come. He's running through the land right now calling men. Get together. Come together. He ain't calling in the natural. He's calling in the spirit. Think about it. How much faith would you have in somebody's prayer? You knew just yesterday they're sitting with another person of the church running you down like you was a dog. 
you wouldn't even want them to lay their hand on you. I don't, I'm telling you, brother, if I thought you was talking bad about me and you laid your hand on me, I'd tell you to get your hand off of me. Amen. Amen. I'm a lot of things and I'm kind of gentle in a lot of areas, but I'm mean as a dog on that gossip. I'll get you cut off so fast you're heaven. I don't I ain't never put up with none of that mess. And then sometimes somebody says something, I still said, Well, I listen to that. Do you ever do? No, of course you don't. I said, I listen to that. I told my wife before, I said, I sat right there and listened to every word of it. And I'd say, Lord, just block that out of my head. I don't even want to think about it. No. I want to tell you, if we ever rose up and got as much confidence in what Jesus said as we do what somebody else has told us. We work signs and wonders and miracles all over. Don't you run around on this earth and say, I wish God had used me. I wish God had blessed me. I wish God had not. Did you see what that woman did? Oh, I tell you, we better get an Elijah ministry among us that will call the hearts of the children and the fathers back together again. Amen. I don't care if they come, I don't care if they come through their street down wrapped in rags, red on one side, yellow on the other, checkered on top. If I thought they had God in them, I said, if I thought they had God in them, glory to God. Somebody say yes, Lord. I mean, we've got to get the hearts of the children and the fathers back together. No more of this discord among the brethren. These seven things doth God, six things doth God hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to Him. And the seventh one is anybody who sows discord among the brethren. If you're trying to drive anybody apart, listen to me. That ain't what's going to cut it in this hour. You are to drive them together. If you know families that are tore up right now, when they come to you to talk bad about one another, say, I pray in the name of the Lord that every one of you will feel the peace of God and come back in unity and come back in harmony. Don't go to a coffee house meeting so they can bash their husband or bash their wife. Tell them to go home and reconcile and love one another. Hallelujah. Amen. So we'll leave it for that if you'll stand this morning. Elijah must first come. Hallelujah. We've walked and lived in Hebrews 11 long enough. It's time to move to Hebrews 12. And I love you today. And I love this Holy Ghost has granted us the ear to hear what the Spirit had to say. Let me tell you, we've been in heavenly places this morning. Hallelujah. For God's sake, don't get so reddished up in what you had today that you can't turn loose of it to believe God for what He's got tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. But before we go, Kim's got a birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. She must be all right because her birthday was Thursday. And she's not far from that, so I believe she's all right. She got close enough in there. I think she's gonna make it, don't she? Everybody sing it good now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.